certainly. The issue of China as a um, beginning its journey on new energy, I think, actually is misplaced. China has made incredible strides so far already. We, um, as a company, we've been here for 10 years um, since the beginning of the biomass industry, the first power plant to be built in 2005. Um, and now China leads the world in biomass to power uh, utilization. And that's our small universe that we see, but the same can be applied for wind, for solar. Um, the progress that has been made is incredible. I think the journey, however, is just beginning. And I think we're moving from the first phase, which was potentially mass deployment, with some great success, but also with some notable um, challenges or some issues that happened along the way. And I think that as the industry starts to mature, we're seeing a very, very substantial opportunity. If I look at biomass specifically, the potential in China for biomass um, is absolutely certain. We have enough agricultural biomass waste, if effectively utilized, to generate well over 40 to 50 gigawatts of power. Just from biomass as one of the very much smaller segments of the industry. And that statistic would make it one of the world's largest power producing countries. So the potential is, uh, as with all things China, when you talk statistics, it's incredible. Uh, the issue is how do we do this in the most efficient way? Mm -hmm. um, and how do we learn from the lessons that we've had and move forward? Uh, and here, again, um, I think China is making great strides. Um, the question when we arrived in 2005 was about how we could deploy on a huge scale very quickly. And that's challenging because you have to use an existing infrastructure. And I think that the infrastructure which existed to make China's first phase of growth, of industrialization, isn't what's needed to provide leadership, whether it be in the clean energy space or many of the other new industries. I think um, we need to move to a more information-centric culture, and we need to be learning the lessons from what we've done. And that at DP Cleantech, and also with our customers and our suppliers, we're seeing um, this process of change happening, and this process of learning and evolving happening. And it will be particularly interesting as we start to look at how we can take the best of what we've learned from China and move that internationally. Yeah, so I think the threats, um, th there are risks with everything that you engage in, for sure. Um, I think that um, it has been made very clear by um, the Chinese government for a number of years the direction. And I think it's beyond doubt. Uh, we see um, nothing but continued conviction from the Chinese government to deal with air pollution issues, water pollution issues, soil remediation issues. Um, from the seat that I sit in, um, the, the direction and the policy that's given and the consistency of that policy is something that many other countries can learn from. Uh, we've been incredibly impressed. And so there will always be learning errors and there will be gaps when you progress fast and there's gaps, uh, there's times when you will potentially um, have to step back and reassess. But directionally, there's no question in my mind whatsoever that the renewable energy industry en masse will grow and each of the sectors has their own particularly unique qualities which will give them a degree of permanence, I think, for the next 20 and 30 years. So I would envisage uh, a very, very substantial transformation in China's energy grid over the next 20 to 30 years. Yeah, this is a great question. Um, we as a company, our foundation is technology and engineering. And we have to constantly innovate to create new technology. So very much at the, the heart of our company is um, innovation which comes through information. And interestingly, the first phase of China's growth was the underappreciation of the importance of the engineering or of all of the soft issues. Hardware is hardware. You can buy a piece of equipment, but if all you believe you're doing is buying the lowest piece of equipment, you're not actually understanding the importance of the integrated solution. And this we're seeing, um, again, I would say in this area, um, the West is far ahead of uh, China today in terms of looking at an integrated solution and at looking at the importance of cost of ownership rather than just the initial cost of purchase. Um, and I think that 
whilst the West has moved in that direction and they clearly have a great deal of efficiencies as a result, I think they've paid a very high price for it also. I think what the opportunity now for China is to learn the lessons from the West to move up that scale, but without quite the same bloated cost structure that exists in, in the West today. So we're seeing that at the conference I've been at today, I'm in mean, a fantastic conference with some enlightened speakers talking about how we can use technology in all aspects of our life. And I would say that applies to every company, whether you're in the power industry, whether you're an internet related company, a consumer goods company, it's how you can adapt the technology to improve your decision making. It's how you can take information to empower your managers so that you can create the leaders of the future. And this has to be embedded not just within your business, but within the fabric and the culture of your company.